each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right on the right-hand side under Featured Content. You get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. Six months for six ninety five, which is a savings of one hundred and ninety nine dollars or twenty two percent, and one full year for eleven ninety five, which is a savings of five hundred and ninety three dollars or thirty three percent. Now they all come with a thirty day money back guarantee. Steve has a huge amount of information, all these different tools that he uses each and every day, and you have access to each one of them. So check it out, get over there, subscribe, and you're going to be very happy. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, you know, when I moved down here 40 years ago, this was the kind of weekend weather that we just had that, that, that I moved down for. I don't know what it was like in Tampa, but, boy, down and here in South Florida, extraordinary. So what you're hearing from Steve and I, folks, okay, because I'm going to double it right now at the same deal. <laughs> this, is the, this has been the weirdest winter we've had. Now, I've only been here totally. 20, 25 years, okay? But yeah. we had, like, six weeks of winter, and since we're babies, okay, we can't take yeah. that anymore. Now, Steve's I from am. Detroit, and I'm from Boston, so we can take plenty of cold weather. When we were kids, okay? That's right. That's right. Exactly. exactly. But we got it made now. I know, man. It we broke. Do. Thank God. We do. Oh, man. my goodness. Yeah, Seriously. Absolutely. So, so it's been great. So I want people to know, and I know we've said this before, you and I don't talk about what I'm going to share during this segment with you before, before we show. So it kind of bleeds right into your opening, which for me is really kind of cool when, when, all, that, uh, when all that bleeds together. So... Um, and what we're going to do today, the review of the charts that we're going to take a look at, okay. here's what they suggest. So I'll just uh, to tell people up front, here's what they suggest. Then we'll go through the charts and then just yep. we'll summarize it again. But longer term, when I talk about longer term, Tom, I'm thinking more monthly type time frames. Yes. So longer term, uh, the, da, the, Dow, the Dow Diamonds, the SPY and the Qs, those are the only three that I looked at, by the way. Yep. Uh, they all suggest, they're all very bullish and suggest higher price. Intermediate term, though. And for intermediate term, I like to use the weekly time frame. We've got some TD9 count tops that are likely to form by Friday. It just depends on where price closes, but likely to form by Friday. And those are patterns that will complete next week. So those are suggesting intermediate term wise, uh, intermediate term to short that we might see a pullback. And I've got some downside targets that we can take a look at from a timing standpoint. When I mean time, I really mean like days, weeks or what have you. We'd be looking for a retracement to pull back the last two to four weeks. So let's get into it. What are those charts that we're taking a look at showing how things are bullish? Well, the first thing, one of the tools that you and I talk about all the time are the A to B equals CD patterns. So this is a bigger picture, Dow Diamond, A to B equals CD pattern. It takes us all the way back into the 2009 time frame. And the next and the logical B point when we take a look at this chart here would be that uh, 2020 uh, COVID high as well as the 2020 COVID low. Now, that sets up just simply a one-to-one -one price target inside of the Dow Diamonds at the 413 level. This is a monthly chart for the SPY. It's already achieved its one-to-one -one price objective. Again, going back to the 2009 time frame, coming forward to the uh, tw uh, COVID-20 uh, top and, and bottom out there. And so we're already above the one-to-one -one level. So that suggests that we should then go target the 564. Now, I, I wouldn't want people to hold me to right to the penny or dollar or what have you. Sure. So we're using that as basically a range. But once you pass one level, odds favor you move to the second level. Now, the one thing to notice on both this SPY chart and this diamond chart is the price movement along this C to D leg is way to the left side of that angle. So the, one of the important things about the A to B equals CD pattern is maintain the same angle on A to B as you would from C to D. It provides us with a ton of information. And when you start trading along the left side, just like we take a look at here in the spies, you typically do more than a one to one A to B equals CD anyways. We take a look at the Qs. So when you got to the Qs, you're kind of like, mm, what, what, what are the charts showing us? Yes. So on the Qs, right? If we go back now, in its case, its actual bottom was in 2008, not 2009. And if we look at its A to B equals CD pattern, we've already attained the 1 to 1.272 level. So the next area would be the 1.618 up at 508. However, when I take a look at this retracement, this retracement has a it's only a 34% retracement. I like to see at least a 0.382. So this begs the question, should we just simply redraw the A to B equals CD pattern? Well, if I do that and I use for my swing point, the November 2021 high, which, by the way, last week was passed with volume. So we've got a confirmed 
monthly, A to B equals CD, and now we've got a 40% retracement, so I got my 0.382 in there, and that gives us a price projection of 637. Now, <laughs> shut up. I love it. Gotta love it, right? But look, this not confirmed by volume. We either believe it or we don't. I know, man. Right, right? So when you step back, uh, look, Tom, I didn't realize that until I started looking at it this, this, this morning. I'm like, what? Whoa. I know. Confirmed? Wow. I didn't see that. Okay. I see so it. Short, I, I got right? it up. Yeah. yeah. I took yeah. the other chart and put it up there. That's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah. Wow. So shorter term, the daily cues are going to likely confirm a wave seven top. It's a very small portion of Basil Chapman's tool. People should get those. And, and, and so in this case here, this is we're getting a short term daily top inside the cues. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it has a T, it has a TD9 count top that is likely to form. I say likely to form because price has to close above bar number five. So intermediate and short term are suggesting that we need to be cautious right now. Intermediate term for the Qs, uh, as I mentioned, are going to likely confirm a TD9 count top this week. Um, and if that unfolds, we should see price pull back into that oscillator and change line. Now, there's a new profile that actually formed below price, and that's a bullish message. But nonetheless, we still can get a retracement. And the first target, there'd be really three targets to the downside that I'd be looking at on the weekly time frame. That's 431, 422, and 417. This is a set of charts, Tom. It shows us consecutive moves higher. Those would be uh, the, the black digits or numbers, and lower uh, consecutive closes are in red numbers. Okay. If we just focus in on the monthly time frame out here, you'll see that we've had some four and five typically the way that price moves consecutively is between two and four bars you know, if you get to five bars and more that typically tells us about a very strong upward momentum move or downward momentum move out here so when we take a look at the cues and how they have we take a look at the signals this is going to be month number four so we're going to have four months to the upside now what's really kind of cool about this if we take a look at them if we go back to 2018 the, num the largest number of consecutive moves higher that we've had is five, and you can see it out here a few times. So if we don't get this short-term top that I just spoke about out here, this tells me that the uh, queues are not going to at least form some type of short-term top until we get to March. And those tops typically lead to, as you see, retracements here, anywhere from two to three to four bars to the uh, downside. Uh, so let me do this here. Let me uh, just kind of fast forward. I want to just make sure that people understand what we're, what we're taking a look at here. And that is that this is a very strong bullish market longer term. And, and of course, you know, we're new to, uh, new all time highs. Uh, people are trying to identify where is the uh, top out there. Um, I'm producing a, a special report. Maybe we'll do a little workshop on it cool. that shows you going back to 1929. Take a look at most of the major indices, including things like the Nikkei and gold. When they topped, what patterns were present? And what we'll find out, Tom, is those are the same patterns that I teach, that I use inside the newsletter each day to uh, call the markets out there. So it's very cool. So people should, uh, now's a great time to subscribe to Mastering Probability. Learn these tools, as you said, they're all available. I teach people how to do this. And uh, so I'm expecting longer term, we're headed much higher. But in the short and intermediate term, we may get a pit stop between this week and next week. And folks, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. You saw the amount of information he gave. It's amazing, okay? Come over to our website at TFNN. It's right under Featured Contact. Hit that button and you're off to the races. Steve, great rundown, man. I'm telling you. Get those Take horns out, man. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Tom. Have a great Thanks. one, man. You Thanks. might think that if you want